Some remember it as the prelude to World War II, the first battleground against the oppression of fascism. Others remember it as a social revolution, when the working class found empowerment to destroy the capitalist and traditionalist structures of society. Whatever we choose to remember it by, the Spanish Civil War was undoubtedly a key historical period of the 20th century that embodied the conflicts and alliances, the triumphs and failures, the victories and defeats of ideological movements for which men and women from every Western country fought and died. In 1931, a general election was held throughout Spain. A constitution was written, and the Second Republic was born. But Spain was relatively new to democracy, and many Spaniards were unwilling to support a republic. Right-wing extremists called for a return of the monarchy, and left-wing extremists called for a revolution. The government in Madrid struggled to maintain the country's stability under the pressures of uncompromising delegates and, more importantly, the economic crisis. Poverty in Spain had reached an all-time high, and the landless peasants of the countryside felt it the most. Two pesetas a day for agricultural labors, if you're lucky. Peasant families living in caves or sand pits. That is poor. That is why we need a revolution. To appease the demands of the left, the government nationalized large estates and set them up as communes. Naturally, landlords were infuriated by these changes. The left, however, did not believe the government was going far enough. Large workers' unions like the CNT were often influenced by anarchist and Marxist ideology, and undertook efforts to attack and destabilize the government. This hostility and unwillingness to compromise would polarize the nation between conservatives and liberals. Even the liberal government, which was viewed as middle ground, would condone the sacking of churches by left-wing extremists who viewed the Catholic Church as a reactionary institution and an enemy of individual freedom. Oye, no te aflija demasiado por tu obispo que no eres inocente, ¿sabes? Debiera haber protestado porque se pagan sueldos de hambre, porque se mantiene al pueblo en la ignorancia porque se deja morir a los enfermos pobres, porque se mandan los niños a trabajar al fondo de la mina. Hace siglos que los obispos se engordan y no protestan de nada. Matar es pecado. Toma, ley y aprende. Entérate bien de cuántas maneras hay de matar. But the Catholic Church was an integral part of Spanish culture, and its destruction was considered an abomination by many Spaniards. The radical reforms that the liberal government enacted instilled a sense of revolution in the working class. Chaos was unleashed in Spain, and the government could no longer control its people. At this point, the military was very concerned with the situation. Churches had been burned, priests and nuns had been killed, people were assaulted on the streets just for wearing a tie or calling themselves capitalists. Recordemos que en su intervención, que provocó airadas protestas en la Cámara, el señor Gil Robles dijo que un país puede vivir en monarquía o en república, en sistema parlamentario o en sistema presidencial, en sovietismo o en fascismo, pero que no puede vivir en anarquía. Y afirmó que hoy España asiste a los funerales de la democracia. ¿Será cabrón ese cabeza de pera? Ellos son los que la quieren enterrar. A group of right-wing officers, led by General Mola, organized a military coup that would take control of Spain. Many cities are taken with little resistance. The support of right-wing conservatives and those looking for an end to the chaos would prove invaluable to the army rebels. 
support from the Civil Guard, the military police, and the Spanish Fascist Party would allow the Nationalist Front to target its political opponents and suppress any possible resistance. But resistance would not be so easily crushed in other cities. In Barcelona, anarchist groups who viewed the army as reactionary oppressors of freedom mobilized and fought with the government for the first time to beat back the insurrection. The anarchists then armed the working class, who joined the fight against the army and seized control of the city. These events inspired resistance in other cities, and Spain was divided in two, between the left-wing republicans and the right-wing nationalists. War had officially begun.